Oh. Corey Seeger smashes a ball down the line. Goodbye. Three to nothing, Texas. Okay, so if you were watching game three, you know that Corey Seeger hit a home run in his second at bat, put the Rangers up three nothing, and really was one of the biggest hits of the game. So I was streaming this live and we were talking about how to approach Corey Seeger. What's the best way to get him out? There's not many ways. He really does hit almost everything hard. If you throw it somewhere in the strike zone, he usually is going to put a really good swing on it. If you look at his heat map right here and we look at where he slugs best, you can see there's a couple of things. One, he crushes inside pitches. So you definitely don't want to miss in. That's number one. So if I was putting a plan against him, I'd say, we can't miss in. If we miss, it has to be away. And you can see he slugs really all over the zone really well. But there is a small sliver if you're able to go down and away. And at least he won't hit a homer off of you. Now, I was mentioning during the stream that I always circle the player that I'm not going to allow to beat me in that game. And if I'm playing the Rangers, it's this guy right here. I'm circling him on my lineup card and I'm saying... He won't beat me. I don't care if I walk him, but I'm not going to let him wreck the game for me. And unfortunately here, he does wreck the game. So I have two at-bats here. I have the first at-bat of the game when he gets a sinker away, right in that spot where the pitcher wants to put it, and he rolls over. And then I have the second at-bat where the ball is left inside. It's a change-up in, and the ball is smashed for a home run. So let's look at both pitches here. So again, we have the one on the left. You can see the sinker running away. And that ball is right on the edge. It's a little bit up, but it's enough on the edge of the plate to get the rollover. So again, if you're going to throw to Seeger, this is where you have to throw the ball. If I'm pitching against him, I'm literally, I mean, that's where I'm trying to throw it because I want to make sure that I don't miss glove side. And if I'm aiming there, I'm either going to walk him or if he wants to get aggressive and wants to swing at it, he's probably not going to do much damage and he's probably going to roll over like he does right here. Now let's go to the swing on the right. This is the home run. Look at where that ball is. Again, if you look at the heat map of where he slugs well, you don't want to put the ball right there. So this is the change up that gets pulled glove side. So you can see in both videos, the catcher is set up away. So he wants to throw that ball again, probably somewhere here. The issue is he doesn't. So he pulls the change up and it gets absolutely tattooed. Again, if you throw the ball in the strike zone to him, especially in that spot, the ball's gonna get crushed. So you have to be really, really careful. Now, pitchers are going to miss pitches. It's impossible to put the ball exactly where you want every time. But if you're going to miss, you cannot miss anywhere around there. And so you have to make sure you're throwing a pitch that you have great conviction with that you are less likely to miss in here. And again, my strategy is literally like, I don't care if I have to aim over there. I just need to make sure that I don't leave anything inside. We also talked about Seeger's approach and what he should be doing. So in that first at bat, again, he's really aggressive. If it's in the zone, he wants to swing. But we talk about building a game plan. And I, I had mentioned that against lefties, what he likes to do is he likes to throw sinkers away. So he's going to throw a lot of sinkers. He's been really doing that a lot in the playoffs. Against righties, he's been more four-seam sweeper against lefties he's been mostly sinkers away and again that's what he does right here so he's going to try to throw the ball away here he's trying to throw the change up away and so if you're Seeger, you really have to look for a ball that's going to start here if the ball starts middle well then you know because he's shown that he's mostly sinker slash two seam away and change ups away that if the ball starts middle it's going to be off the plate or it's going to be on the corner if the ball starts in well then it's going to run back over the plate and I can smash it so again if we look at these two pitches here they come this ball starts in this ball starts more middle 
And so that's what I was mentioning, right? Like this ball starting more middle, it's going to continue to run away. Now it's on the outside corner. This ball starts in. I see that ball in. My eyes light up and I say, it's go time. Smash home run right there. And the other interesting thing is, if you look at Seager and his breakdown of pitches and what he hits best, this was actually a pretty good matchup for him because he hits two seam sinkers and change ups almost the exact same this year. He had seven home runs off of two seam slash sinkers. He had seven home runs off of change ups. If you look at his weighted on base average, it was a little bit better off of two seamers, 457 versus 438 against changeups, but still they're both really, really good. And if you look at his expected weighted on base average, it's almost identical again, 454 on two seamers and 440 on changeups. So neither of those pitches typically works well, but again, if you're going to throw them, you can't throw it in. That's the mistake. You got to throw it away, and if you miss, you got to miss off the plate. And for me, again, I just put them on. I don't care. Just walk them. I'm not letting them beat me, and unfortunately, they did. So that's all we have. Let me know what you think about this. This is the cat and mouse game between batter and pitcher that I really love, and especially in playoff baseball because every pitch matters so much.